Following my video on Whiplash from Iron Man 2, and how he was not in fact just an adaptation of one character from the comics, but several, combined, it's been suggested to me that I do an analysis and comparison between Yellow Jacket and his comic book counterpart too. But, much like Whiplash, it's not that easy to narrow down, seeing as the Darren Cross incarnation of the Yellow Jacket character didn't appear in comics until September of 2016 well over a year after Ant-Man's theatrical release. First and foremost, we need to begin with the original Ant-Man himself, Hank Pym. He is known for his use of various code names over the years, including Ant-Man, Giant-Man, Goliath, Yellow Jacket, and even the Wasp, following the death of his beloved wife, Janet Van Dyne. The reason behind all these different names is a bit complicated, and I will probably explain them more in depth in a future superhero breakdown on Ant-Man, but for now, just know that the Pym particles he uses to shrink down made him increasingly more unstable mentally as the years went on, causing him to develop a personality crisis. He wasn't alright up there and had a few screws loose. The nickname Giant Man came about mostly from his insecurity and sense of inadequacy compared to his other Avengers teammates, like Iron Man and Thor. He wanted to feel bigger, more important. I guess Giant Man just did it for him. Anyways, let's focus on the name Yellow Jacket specifically, and what made Hank Pym take on that moniker. In Avengers number 59, a new figure emerges in New York, calling himself Yellow Jacket. He captures some criminals and is deemed a hero. He breaks into Avengers Mansion and wants to become a member. He also claims to have killed Goliath during a scuffle in Pym's lab, and causes the Wasp to faint as a result. Yellow Jacket fights the Avengers and kidnaps Van Dyne, taking her to his shrunken down base in a tree and forcing her to kiss him, before letting her go. Yellow Jacket is revealed to be Pym all along, following a botched experiment in his lab. He had inhaled chemicals that induced schizophrenia, creating another persona and essentially causing him to fight himself. Yellow Jacket is the overly confident and arrogant version of Pym, one that's off his fucking rocker. He's lost his marbles. Hank Pym wasn't the only Yellow Jacket featured in Marvel Comics before the release of 2015's Ant-Man though. The second was Rita DeMera, who debuted in Avengers number 264 from February of 1986. Using an electromagnetic helmet of her own design, Rita had stolen Hank Pym's yellow jacket equipment and modified it to fit her female form. She would do battle with the Wasp, and later become a member of Helmet Zemo's Masters of Evil, helping the Baron seize control of Avengers Mansion in the storyline Under Siege, which I reviewed a while back if you want to check it out. In the MCU, Darren Cross is the former protege of Hank Pym, who seized control of his mentor's company, becoming the CEO of Pym Technologies and shortly afterwards, renaming it Cross Technologies. He soon became obsessed with Pym's secret experiments involving Pym particles and the Ant-Man suit, though Pym himself denied their existence, claiming Ant-Man was an urban legend and nothing else. Because Hank Pym was forced out of his own company, it gave Cross the time and resources to pursue the size-altering technology and create his own suit, dubbed Yellow Jacket, modeled after Pym's original designs. His intention was to manufacture them on a grand scale for military purposes, selling them to members of Hydra and the Ten Rings. Getting to the final product wasn't easy though, as replicating his own form of Pym particles became harder than he thought. His obsession consumed him as he worked long hours and test after test led to live subjects being turned to bloody goo on the floor. He even kills a senior executive at Cross Technologies this way when he questions the risks behind making a yellow jacket suit. As the film progresses, Cross becomes increasingly more unstable, downright insane. You wonder if he has been performing any tests on himself or wearing the yellow jacket suit which is lacking the special helmet of the original Ant-Man one that protects the wearer from the negative side effects of the shrinking technology. Pym particles deteriorate the mind and affect the brain's chemistry. Though Cross had the specs to replicate the Ant-Man suit with his yellow jacket one, he didn't have the most important piece of the puzzle, and as a result, loses his mind. The MCU's incarnation of Yellow Jacket borrows elements from Hank Pym's crazier alter ego of the same name in the comics. 
Darren Cross becomes unhinged as a result of his obsession with Pym particles, and the potential experiments on himself. In much of the same way, Pym became preoccupied with his work, which resulted in him botching an experiment and creating a different persona. On top of that, Rita DeMera was someone who stole Hank Pym's shrinking technology and used it for her own personal gain, just like Cross does in the film, even going so far as taking Pym's own company from him too. Bastard. The final component of Yellow Jacket is of course Darren Cross himself, who was a character in the original comics. He debuted in Marvel Premiere No. 47 in April of 1979, and was the founder of Cross Enterprises. Due to a fatal heart condition, he had to have a special pacemaker surgically placed into his body, which mutated his circulatory system, giving him superhuman strength and reflexes. A side effect of these abilities was that his heart would burn out and need to be replaced, with him having to undergo transplant after transplant, abducting heart donors from the slums of the city. He would face off against Scott Lang, the second Ant-Man, and while he may be vastly different than the Darren Cross we see in the MCU, from a visual standpoint, the idea of his abilities coming at a cost was something explored in the Ant-Man film, technically speaking. More recent comics had Cross return and battle Ant-Man some more, getting Pym particles in his bloodstream resulting in uncontrollable size changes. Cross's rebranding and debut as Yellow Jacket in Astonishing Ant-Man No. 12 in September of 2016 came from an alliance between him and Elias Starr, Egghead. Egghead and Cross managed to steal Pym's newest model of the Yellow Jacket armor, which is capable of controlling Pym particles for its user. The story debuted over a year after Ant-Man's release, and it's quite obvious the pop culture impact of the Marvel Cinematic Universe resulted in this change with the Darren Cross character. Without the MCU, it would have never happened, and honestly, Cross has benefited from it greatly, I think, at least in modern day comics. Love or hate the MCU's yellow jacket, but one thing I hope we can all agree on is that his armor is incredibly badass looking. I love the design of it and its inclusion of the mechanical arm cannons, something the comics would adopt as well. I mean, why not? Darren Cross is in many ways a carbon copy of Obadiah Stane, Ironmonger from the first Iron Man film, a fact many people bring up. And though I find Stane to be a better written character, at least for the first half, and Jeff Bridges' performance far more entertaining, Darren Cross still has his strengths. I think his unstable nature can be quite unsettling and make him very intimidating at times. And yeah, he's weak in comparison to Obadiah, and the major plot points of Ant-Man and Iron Man are basically identical, but realize Ant-Man was made to be a phase one movie. Production hell plagued it for a while and by the time it did come out, it didn't feel as impressive and memorable compared to some other first installment films that far into the franchise. But you can't blame it for that, and I think it's unfair to judge it in that way. If you just forget Iron Man for one second, and suspend some disbelief for Christ's sake, it's still a fairly solid film. Yellow Jacket is far from perfect, but he can still be very fun to watch at times. What are your thoughts on the MCU's Yellow Jacket? Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button and bell icon to be notified of all future content I release on my channel. Also, share it to anyone you know who loves comics, movies, or nerdy stuff in general to help me out, and support me on Patreon. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.